In this video, we're going to complete example 5. We're given the function f of x equals x squared plus 3x. Previously, we were substituting numbers in place of x. You'll notice that this time we're substituting pronumerals or even algebraic expressions in place of x. In this video, we're going to complete four questions. On this slide, you can see questions a and b. It's going to get a lot trickier on the next slide where we have questions C and D. Starting with question A, we're replacing X with a pronumeral N. So instead of X squared plus 3X, we're simply going to have N squared plus 3N. We have the exact same expression, we just have N instead of X. So let's now move on to question B. It helps if the original function was written above this. So the original function was f of x equals x squared plus 3x. So this time we're going to replace x with n minus 1. So instead of x squared, we're going to have n minus 1 squared. It's important that you put n minus 1 in brackets because you're squaring the whole expression n minus 1. We then have plus 3x. So in place of the x after the 3, we're going to have n minus 1 once again in brackets because we're multiplying 3 by the whole expression, n minus 1. I almost forgot to put the equal sign here. Now we've taken the first step and we've replaced x with n minus 1, but we were also asked to simplify this. So I'm going to start by expanding my brackets here. If I take n minus 1 and square it, it's the same as multiplying n minus 1 by itself. I can also expand this part of the expression. Positive 3 times n will give us plus 3n. And positive 3 times negative 1 will give us minus 3. I'm going to use the FOIL method to expand my two sets of brackets n times n will give me n squared. I then go n times minus 1, which will give me minus 1n. I then go minus 1 times n, which gives me minus 1n again. And then minus 1 times minus 1 gives me plus 1. I still have the plus 3n and the minus 3, so I'm just going to copy them down below. Moving on to the next step, we have n squared. Let's now group together some like terms. We've got minus 1n, minus 1n, and plus 3n. So minus 1, minus 1 is negative 2, and then plus 3 will give us plus 1. So plus 1n, and then we have our constants, the plus 1 and the minus 3. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So we get minus 2. You might remember that we don't write 1 as a coefficient for a pronumeral. So we'll just take that away. We get n squared plus n minus 2. We've completed question B. Let's now move on to question C. You'll notice the questions are getting much harder because we have two functions within question C. So what do we do in this situation? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat each function separately. We'll start with f of h plus 1. What would we get if we got f of h plus 1? Well, sometimes it helps if you write the original function above that. I'm going to do it in red. So the original function was f of x equals x squared plus 3x. I then replace the x with h plus 1. So I now have h plus 1 squared in place of x squared, and in place of 3x, I'm going to have plus 3, and in place of x, h plus 1. I'm now going to rub out the part in red. I can leave it there if I want to, but it's not required as part of the working out. All right, let's simplify this expression. I've got h plus 1 squared, which is the same as saying h plus 1 times h plus 1. I also need to expand this set of brackets here. 3 times h will give me 3h, and 3 times 1 will give me 3, so plus 3. 
I'm going to use the FOIL method to expand my two sets of brackets here. H times H will give me H squared. I then go H times plus 1, which gives me plus 1 H. Plus 1 times H will also give me plus 1 H. And then plus 1 times plus 1 will give me plus 1. I then write down my 3H and my plus 3. Plus 3H plus 3. Let's collect some like terms. We have an H squared to start off with. 1H plus 1H is 2H plus 3H will give me 5H plus 5H. Looking at the constants, the plus 1 and the plus 3 will give me plus 4. I've now worked out what f of h plus 1 will equal. What about f of h? Let's work that one out. So looking back at our original function f of x, we're just replacing the x with h. So instead of x squared, it's going to be just h squared. And instead of 3x, it's just going to be 3h. Looking back at the original question, we have been asked to find f of h plus 1 minus f of h and all of this is over 2. Now we know that f of h plus 1 is the same as h squared plus 5h plus 4. So we need to replace it with this h squared plus 5h plus 4. We then need to subtract f of h. Now f of h is h squared plus 3h and I need to subtract this whole expression meaning it needs to be in brackets like so. All of this needs to be over 2. Now this minus sign we see here needs to be applied to each term inside the brackets. It needs to be applied to the h squared as well as the plus 3h. So we're going to get h squared plus 5h plus 4 minus h squared and minus 3h. Remembering that this is all over 2. Now you might notice that we have an h squared and a minus h squared. That means that we can cancel these. Now we just collect some like terms. 5h minus 3h will give us 2h. We also have the plus 4, so plus 4, remembering that this is all over 2. Now I'm going to factorize the numerator here. When I factorize it, I get 2 bracket h plus 2. Let's check that. 2 times h is 2h, and 2 times 2 is 4. It's still over 2. And we can now do some cancelling. The 2s can cancel, leaving us with h plus 2. We now have a very nice simplified expression. We need to now move on to question D. You might have noticed we've run out of room, so I'm just going to start with a nice blank slide. Once again, I've got two different functions here, so I'll work them out separately and put them together at the end. So we'll start with f of x plus h. We'll work that one out. I'll put that here down at the left. And to help myself out, I'm going to take the original function here, f of x, and I'm going to write it above the function I'm trying to find. So f of x equals x squared plus 3x. So in place of x, I'm going to put x plus h. That means I'm going to have x plus h squared plus 3 times x plus h. All I've done is replaced the x with x plus h each time. I now want to expand and simplify. So if I have x plus h squared, I need to write it down twice. x plus h times x plus h. When I expand this set of brackets, 3 times x will give me 3x, so plus 3x, and 3 times h will give me 3h, plus 3h. I'm going to use the FOIL method here. x times x is x squared. x squared. 
x times h is xh, so plus xh. h times x is hx, or can be written as xh, so plus xh. Finally, h times h will give me h squared. I still have the 3x and the 3h, so I need to write that down below, three, plus 3x, plus 3h. Let's do some simplifying here. I can combine some like terms, xh plus xh will give me 2xh. So I'm going to have x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 3x plus 3h. All right, next we need to find f of x minus h. What do we get when we do f of x minus h? Well, once again, I'm going to write the original function above this just to help me with the substitution. f of x equals x squared plus 3x. So in place of x, I need to write x minus h. So I'll start with x minus h in brackets squared. And then in place of 3x, I'm going to have 3 bracket x minus h. All I've done is replace the x with x minus h each time. I now want to expand my brackets. Where I have x minus h squared, I'm just going to write it as x minus h times x minus h. I then have plus 3 times x, which gives me plus 3x. And plus 3 times negative h will give me minus 3h. Minus 3h. I'm now going to use FOIL to expand my two sets of brackets. x times x is x squared. So we get x squared. And then x times negative h will give us negative xh. Or minus xh. Negative h times x is minus hx, or can also be written as minus xh. So minus xh again. And then minus h times minus h will give us a positive. We get plus h squared. We also have plus 3x and minus 3h. So we write that next to it. Plus 3x minus 3h. We're going to simplify this by combining like terms. I've got minus xh twice. So when I put them together, I get minus 2xh. And then the rest stays the same. Plus h squared plus 3x minus 3h. We've now simplified our two functions. You'll notice that we need to take our two functions and subtract them. So we're taking f of x plus h, and we're subtracting f of x minus h. What's that going to look like? So we'll start by replacing f of x plus h with the expression we can see here. We'll write down x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 3x plus 3h. We are then asked to subtract f of x minus h. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract something and I need to put the whole expression in brackets because I'm subtracting the whole of f of x minus h, which is this expression here. So we'll write down x squared minus 2xh plus h squared plus 3x minus 3h. Now, whenever you subtract an expression in brackets, anything that was a minus becomes a plus, and anything that was a plus becomes a minus. So this will change to minus x squared plus 2xh minus h squared minus 3x plus 3h. The expression we can see here on the left will remain the same. We have x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 3x plus 3h. Is there anything here we can cancel? Well, we have x squared and minus x squared. They will cancel. We also have h squared and minus h squared. They will cancel as well. 
We also have plus 3x and minus 3x. They will cancel also. We can now collect some like terms. We have 2xh plus 2xh. That will give us 4xh. We also have plus 3h plus 3h. That will give us plus 6h. We now have a nice simplified expression. A lot of people like to take one more step and factorize this. Now you don't have to, but we'll just do it anyway. We would get 2h bracket 2x plus 3. And we'll double check that. 2h times 2x, 2 times 2 is 4, and then we get xh. And 2h times 3 will give us 6h. Anyway, we have finished example 5 now. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.